Welcome to your Market Brief for the week of April 27th. We're coming off another turbulent week where we saw the May contract for WTI crude crash into negative territory and the U.S. economy wipe out all job gains since the Great Recession. Yet the S&P 500 was only 16% off record highs. To help anticipate what's to come this week, we're joined by Katie Kaminsky, a visiting lecturer in finance at the MIT Sloan School of Management and chief research strategist at Alpha Simplex Group, where she manages $4.6 billion. Great to have you with us on this Monday morning, Katie. Great to be here. What's baked into the market in terms of reopening the economy? We had Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin just say he expects it to be May, June. Some say that's a little too early. So I guess what's the market anticipating in terms of when the economy is going to start reopening? I would say that the market is still a little bit more short term and waiting every single day for another piece of data. Um, the problem that we have for most investors out there is we have a lot of data and expectations that came into the beginning of this year. And now we're watching more and more information coming out from the ECB, coming out from uh, the US government, trying to determine whether or not we're gonna have enough action to avoid people from having to react. Um, I think from our side, we always think about behavior. We had a situation where people were reacting to what happened in markets. What we're trying to avoid and what governments are trying to avoid is people being forced into, re into action in, in, in what they're doing in terms of having to declare bankruptcy or having to really um, make tough financial decisions uh, if they don't have the revenues and the uh, ability to uh, recover from this type of long, uh, you know, long closed uh, economy situation. So Katie, on that note, we'll of course hear from the Fed this week, interest rate decision. We've seen an extraordinary amount of programs coming out of the Federal Reserve the past few months. So kind of switching to the rates and bonds market, uh, what, what do you make in the, of this in the current environment? Well, so what we've seen in the markets, we've seen that bonds did provide some flight to safety defensive type exposure, uh, which was offsetting for equity markets in the month of March. Um, there was some wavering of that within European fixed income. We've also seen uh, interest rates go to the lowest historically um, in, during recent periods. And what I think we're concerned about is how tired is the defensive trade meaning if the Fed continues to try and lower rates, is it gonna help anymore? Um, one indication would be that the government is already coming in with much more fiscal stimulus. Um, and so we're really seeing a shift this year from the dependence on, uh, on monetary policy versus now really sort of having to turn to fiscal stimulus. And fiscal stimulus, to be honest, is a lot more opaque. Um, and so I think that's the challenge is sort of how can, um, the Fed come out and, and, and back up um, and be helpful to try and help ease the situation if it were to get worse. Right. So just finally, how are you navigating these waters then, given, given the fundamentals, uh, given Fed outlook, given the current valuations of the markets? So I think one of the reasons this is an interesting environment for, for me is that I'm a systematic trader and systematic traders incorporate all of their decisions using um, thoughtful, uh, systematic process. And, and I think in these environments, it's even more important to be systematic, to measure risk, to evaluate things from a strategic perspective, um, to remain calm. Because I think it's very easy to react and we have to really sort of like the market, wait it out, figure out things, take our time, be strategic. And um, from a market's perspective, that means that we're cautiously up cautiously um, pessimistic about the equity markets. We're still hopeful that the government and the Fed will be helpful, so relatively bullish still on bonds, but also you know, remaining liquid and, and trying to be um, strategic. Katie Kaminsky, really appreciate your insights. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. And turning to a preview of the earnings calendar, earnings season really heats up with a slew of major companies reporting quarterly results. We have 3M, Alphabet, and Starbucks on Tuesday, Boeing, Facebook, Microsoft, and Tesla crossing on Wednesday, Amazon, Apple, McDonald's, and Twitter releasing earnings on Thursday, and then finally on Friday, we'll get key names in energy, including Chevron, ExxonMobil, and Philips 66. 
Now, for more on how investors can better understand the global oil market, I recently spoke with David Greenberg. He's president of Greenberg Capital and former executive board member for the New York Mercantile Exchange. He unpacked his outlook for crude following last week's pain. Take a look. What's really a problem is a tremendous amount of oil is used often to speculate, to um, be a hedge, and more importantly, to be a collateral for loans. Because you could, if crude oil is trading 50, you could loan against the building or a project at 40, at 35. There's always a big, big gap. But we went through that gap and then we passed through it, you know, and we passed through it. And I gotta tell you something, what you might see is real issues in the banking system on defaults that are, come, that are gonna come forward. We're not sure, but it will probably most likely happen in some way, shape or form. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how this unfolds on so many different levels. This week, we'll hear from Chevron and Exxon. Both are reporting earnings. Uh, what are you going to be looking for to get a sense of the impact on some of the big energy companies? It's really their long-term guidance. Um, this is going to be something, listen, you know, we, there's going to be a time that we will catch up. It's going to take some time. It could take six months, a year, year and a half. It all depends on how this soft opening of the entire planet, which I never thought I'd ever say, is going to happen. And, you know, listen, the last time oil companies really lost money, because let's be realistic, where they get it out of the ground and they, they have their own storage facilities, and a lot of them have their own refinery facilities, it's a much different game. So where they might not make as much, and you might see the stock come off, you know, but I've I've bought some oil company stocks just for the long term. I put them away in my account and I'm not looking at them for a year. Because uh, I think still in the long term, it'll float back up to a natural price of where it was and, and probably where it should be. There's always opportunities. And I think you're going to see opportunities in companies that just like when the dot-com era blew up, there are certain companies, E-Trade um, and all these other companies that had fundamentally good sound, Amazon was one of them, had fundamentally good sound business practices. They weren't over leveraged. They weren't in debt. And you know what? There are companies that got pulled down with the suction of this market, both in stocks and commodities, that will find value. Can you give us any names of the opportunities that you like? Well, I bought, you know, I bought Fang, F-A-N-G. Um, actually, I bought Fang when crude oil came off $14 one night. This was a few weeks ago and ended up coming in only about $8 lower. Now, I remember during the Gulf War when I was long, when the market came in $8 lower, and trust me, that was a bad day for me. And I thought I'd, ever, I'd never see anything like that again. So when that market came in $14 lower, some of the oil stocks just got obliterated. And I bought Fang, and honestly, I was a little shocked. I bought it like $15, I think, in 80 cents or something. It's trading like $30 an hour or something. And I sold out half of my position because as a trader, you always want to take some profits. And I'm just going to leave that in my account. My thanks to David Greenberg. That concludes today's market brief. Stay safe, stay healthy at home. I'm Caroline Woods. Thanks so much for watching.